Okay. Okay. Uh, basically, I called up to uh, try and find out what the status of my uh, package is. I should have gotten it today. Uh, haven't gotten any call from them, uh, basically from the packages I've sent by fax or anything uh, from them. These are going to, uh, and I sent them into uh, the U.S. District uh, Federal or U.S. District Court uh, for the United States, okay, for the Southern District of Iowa. And I was looking for the Office of Magistrate Judge. They claim there is no specific Office of Magistrate Judge. They have three magistrate judges there, but, uh, and they wanted a case number and everything. I said, well, this package was sent in in Admiralty, and basically it was supposed to go to uh, the Office of the Magistrate Judge. Well, she gave me sort of the runaround. Of course, that's what we've gotten for the most part in this whole damn process. Yes. We've been to the bankruptcy before. <clears throat> We've been to uh, the United States Supreme Court, to the circuit uh, court. But we've never gone to either one at the bankruptcy or to uh, the Supreme Court justice mm-hmm. with a checkmate. Mm-hmm. Okay. We've never placed them on a uh, checkmate in the in the scenario. U.S. bankruptcy court. Okay. Who's the bankrupt in this damn country? It's the United States Corporation right. is bankrupt. We have to go into them. They're the they're the uh, pawn E in the process, and we're the pawn or. We have to put our demand, and I think we need to go into the bankruptcy court again. One last shot into that court and basically put them on demand that uh, we're calling in our pledges. To support their damn bankruptcy. Hmm. <clears throat> Same thing with the state, okay? We hit the damn state attorney general up, basically, and uh, on these uh, items, we just, you just got to start hammering them, okay? And it's got to be more than just one damn person doing this. You think you've got a place? Send it in, okay? They ain't going to do a damn thing to you if you're standing in admiralty. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you've got to get this in, and we've got to start hitting them. More than just one person doing all this stuff, sending it in, waiting for a response. So I'm going to send it into the bankruptcy court. I'm going to send it into that chief judge. Okay, these magistrates at one time were under the circuit courts. They call that uh, circuit court, Supreme Court judge, not a judge, but a justice. Okay, let's get him start acting in his justice capacity. We want justice. We're not asking for a judge uh, to rule upon anything. We want justice. We want admiralty justice. Now, I had Tom post in a couple new write-ups there uh, on the group site there for putting the nomenclature on the back side of the certificate of live birth. The one that I posted up the other day was for the uh, DD-214. The cover letter basically is a little uh, more powerful 
than uh, the one that was up there uh, for the DD-214 the day before. So look those cover letters over, rewrite them, make them whatever you want, okay? Read those definitions that I had posted up there also about the Pawnee, the Pawn Ore, and about the Pawn itself, and about the heritage, okay? Those items, the heroin, okay? All these judges out here are operating primarily in maritime law. Unless you've harmed somebody, then they will be operating in admiralty. And basically, all these judges, if they're operating in maritime and with that damn bar card, they're Judases. That's the Judas that basically was after Jesus in the Bible. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's all throughout the Bible. The Judases. If somebody's breathing in the phone, they need to back off or mute out. Who is that? I muted it. So, we just need to keep on this and uh, send them in, okay? The bankruptcy judge told the guys down South Carolina, you can do this yourself. Well, basically, all we have to do is come in and we claim that and we put our uh, order in. Now, think about it. Bankruptcy court. Is that not a prize court? Yeah, because somebody's getting the prize because there's not enough money out there to make everything work. Well, the money's there, okay, but yeah. somebody's winning the prize and the bankruptcy. Somebody's getting a relief, so they're getting the prize. So we just have to place them on checkmate. We're placing the United States and the state of whatever on in checkmate. The two moves in chess, the first one, when you basically get somebody started to get them cornered, is check. When they do not have any other moves to make and they lose the game, it's called checkmate. Then we put this check upon the backside of these documents or attach it to, now it becomes a check mate to the instrument. And that's how the game of chess is played. And you move your pawns around, your pledges. So checkmate means no escape. Yeah, the game's over. They can't make another move. They're dead in the water. Yeah, and that's what we want. We want. We don't want to play the game anymore. Yeah, we want them totally dead in the water. Now they have to pay up. But they're the ones that are the bankrupt, not us. They're in admiralty, not us. Or maritime. We're in admiralty. We're the creditor. They're the debtor. And that's how you cancel the debt that basically is owed. It's really owed to the people. The vast majority of the debt in this country. So we'll send it into the bankruptcy court, and then I'm also going to send it into that circuit supreme court judge and lay the deal on the table. 
You're in checkmate. I want my damn payment. I'm going to start sinking maritime vessels on you. <laughs> That right, makes sense. Now, yeah, we're not going to kill anybody, but we'll take down the vessels. And the whaling, basically that whole thing about whaling and shipping in Title 46... That's what they've been doing to us. They've been stripping our blubber away from us. That's for sure. You don't kill a whale by harpoon. They never did really kill most of the whales. They just took all the blubber away from them and then let them sink. But they were still alive, a lot of them. When they were cut loose. Mm. Yeah, that's the sadistic part of whaling. The inhumane side of it. But they're doing it to us as mammals that are in the ocean of commercial commerce. They don't give a shit about the living body, human being. They only want our what's in our back pocket or can take away from us. So if they don't give a shit about us, we don't give a shit about them. These maritime judges, bar attorneys, all of these shitheads basically ought to be strung up and tarred and feathered and I don't know what all else. They've destroyed this damn country. They've destroyed more lives in this country than you can shake a stick at. along with all their damn quack doctors and ministers and everything else out here. The Babylonian Empire. Cut away the fat of the whales. The American land whales. Should have contact numbers for the faxes and everything else for the clerks of the court, for the bankruptcy court, and basically make it as belligerent as you want. You've got to get your point across that you're fucking pissed off and you're not going to take this shit anymore. When they did do the Bankruptcy Act, they did bring Admiralty onto the land because they put high tide markers on top of all the mountains and everything. The Coast Guard yeah. did. And then, um, like, uh, in the American Revolution, they brought Admiralty onto the land. And that's what made everybody mad, you know, like, ordering Yeah, but see, around. we've got to operate in Admiralty. Yeah, I know that. But, I mean, they perverted it. Well, yeah, they they turned around and perverted it with the maritime shit. Right. Trying to keep everybody out of Admiralty and keep them in maritime law. See, if, if you operate in maritime law, you can't sue them. But if you operate in Admiralty law, you sue the living shit out of them. And you can sink their vessel on them.
That's the game. And that's all this whole damn thing is. This whole life is just a game. Okay? It's whether you have the backbone to stand up to these guys or not. I've risked everything I had to try and get to where I am right now. But I will find somehow to keep going. I mean, I'm amazed that there's 100 million people out of work and 50 million people on food stamps, and everybody talks like everything's normal. Yeah. Half our country is starving or out of work, and they act like everything's okay. Have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, and but basically the bank or the bankers, the lawyers, the insurance brokers, and all them, they don't give a shit. They're still out there cutting away on the people, taking their assets away from them constantly, not giving them the remedy that basically is sitting there, access to their real inheritance, because they have it tied up as a heritable item, but not as inheritance yet. We were supposed to be had that stuff released to us when we turned 20. There should be no student loans debts out there. But yet, all the people that come out of college, they come out and they graduate in debt. False debt. All the mortgages with the banks, the houses are paid for at the end of three years. You have to turn around and see all these bonds, your certificate of title to your vehicle, your driver's license. These are all pledges. You have pledged so much of your asset behind that instrument. They don't tell you how much you've pledged in all cases. You have to turn around and put the stop to it and put it in checkmate. Right. You have to seize the property. Place it in checkmate and then basically go to the prize court. I was thinking that I probably should have notified the bankruptcy court a week ago when I started looking at this prize court, but I didn't. I thought we found this other place, this magistrate over under the federal district, or the district court side, United States District Court. I thought there was some damn honesty in the damn judicial system, but lo and behold, there ain't very fucking much out there at all. They're all a bunch of crooks. And then half the damn clerks of the court, they don't know shit about what the hell is really going on in the real world of law. All these guys that go to college and get educated about law and everything, they don't know what law is in this country. They've been taught basically what they're supposed to do, and that is to operate in maritime law, which is deceptive and destructive law to the whole damn country. That's for sure. So that's about all I got to say on the subject. Hey, Thomas, where's that? We just that? need to get I, I, out there and keep hammering away. Okay. Which document has the definitions of the pawn and the pawnor and the pawnee and everything? I can't. 
I I made copies of everything. I haven't found that one yet. Well, it should have been one of the last ones that I definitions that I posted up there to Tom. Yeah, it must be around the 13th or 14th. Maybe it's hey, Admiralty. You're, you're on Windows, right? Yeah. The easiest is it United way United States it, Admiralty it, Treasury bailment. Well, the easiest way to find stuff like that is to uh, take your uh, Windows Explorer, which is you know looks at your directory. I know. I do don't it. know how to do that yet. Well, it's the one that started off with Admiralty Lean. Okay. It was two pages. I know. I just started printing there with documents because. But I still haven't found that one because um, it's easier than summing back and forth and trying to bring up the files with the computer. I just print them and I can study them in hand. Well, you, if you set up Windows Explorer right, so you can so you see all the files on the left, and when you click on them, you can get a quick preview on the right, and you don't have to really load them up into the program. I just want to know which document had the Pawnee in it. Is it the volunteer? General Court Martial, Marshal, uh, Admiral? No, no, it, it starts off with uh, Admiral T. Lean. Okay, I'm looking for it. I don't know what you posted it up as, Tom, but it was... Uh, okay, I have United States Admiral Treasury bailment, but that's not it. And bailment, the sumo, office of that... Yeah, it should have been. Well, when you find it, you don't, I don't want to uh, hold up the call. I've Just let me know later, Tom, where it's at because okay. I'm pulling them all up. I haven't found it yet. I've got everything back to uh, the June 13th. Well, it's in the recent ones. It's in, in the within the last 10, I bet you. I know. You got I mean, to be I mean, posted look, look. today. You did the 14th, the 13th. I'll just go through them one by one. That's all right. You didn't call okay. the Office of Magistrate Court, did you, Tom? Uh, well, here's the names I, I have. Uh, going backwards, I had the post obit uh, pawn appearance bond, uh, then post obit pawn bearer note, post obit pawn bearer bond, prize court manifest of seized vessels, United States Admiralty Treasury bailment, Assumed Court of Vessel Master, uh, fax to the State AG, Assumed Court of Vessel Master, flow chart, the fax to, uh, to the State AG, get out of the vets and doc format. Assume Offices of Vessel Master, demand complete honorable discharge, the flow chart again, you are at uh, You're going too far system. back. You're going too far back. Right, that's it all the way should have been around the now. 14th. Yeah, I'm looking. I'll just find it. I'll look for it. It's just that. Okay. We, it would be nice. I, we got to put notes on some of this stuff that where the definitions are, Thomas, because you know, like we, you know, well, the paper oh, here, it is. here it is. The Pawnees in the uh, Prize Court Manifest of Seized Vessels. Okay. The fourth one down. You might also look up the following words: hypothecation. Maritime hypothecation, maritime insurance, marine insurance, marine interest, bottomry, bottomry bond, bottomry lien, respond a uh, bond, a maritime hypothecation, tact, T A C I T, hypothecation. Pass it. Okay. What was that Hypnosis. word that began with here? What was, what was that word that began with B? Barmery? Bottomry. Bottomry. B O T T O M R Y. Ah, oh, got it. Thank you. You said bottomry lean. Right. And yeah. Bond and lean, all yeah. three of them. Hypnosis. <laughs> okay. A state of artificial catalepsy or whatever. Cat catalepsy or wow. 
Solomon and us, whatever. And basically, that's what uh, Solomon and whatever basically is that that this condition is said to produce a state of inventory intoxication, which for the time destroys moral agencies. Well, that sure describes what they've done. The one right before it is uh, a species of mental unsoundness connected with sleep, which destroys moral agencies during the time it exists. And see, that's what this maritime system has done. It has placed us in a state of hypnosis. To destroy our moral coercion of knowing wrong wrong. It is totally wrong to need a driver's license. It's totally wrong to have insurance. These are morally wrong in every damn regard. What was that word you said? You said destroys our moral what? Uh, If you go into hypnosis in Ballantines, you'll see these other two words. Okay. Okay. The last one, the S-M-S-O-M-N-A-M-B-U-L-I-S-M, okay, ism, okay, it's an ism. Anything that has ism in it is the devil. Omnabalism? Oh, okay, sleep, sleeping, sleep, somnambulism, okay. Somnambulism, whatever. Yeah, state of sleep. Yeah, you're walking around, you're not awake. Somnambulism, yeah, yes, the Latin version of uh, sleepwalking, okay. Yeah. Add a little TV and some drugs and a little alcohol, and you, you're you're a zombie. Mm. Yeah. Hypothecation. Yeah. A Roman law named for a pawn or pledge where the thing pledge remained in the possession of the pledgeor. Hmm. And then it goes on, it's a contract. And then see, they're trying to take that away from us, that they're trying to wail, cutting the blubber away for their benefit. Using their damn maritime claims of false debt. Claiming that we're the debtor, when we're not the debtor. Okay, I guess that's about it then. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we'll we'll put our our own thoughts to this and uh, see what we can try and dig up for you. Yeah, that's that's how they made all the money. All the people that don't produce anything are just making big fat bank from stripping the blubber, like you said. They do it at the stock market and they do it at the bank on all the transactions, yeah. the loans. Plus and then they got the people that basically just sit around. And uh, don't do a damn thing. Don't fight for their damn self. Right. That's true. Okay. 
Okay, I, I got bounced out of my uh, my Yahoo group. You said that was uh, on the uh, the prize court manifest of seized vessel. Is that what you said it was? The Pawnee mm-hmm. and Pawnee and Pawn owner stuff? The yeah, prize dock. Admiralty Treasury bailment dock. Let me get the file back up. Get the right back up. Oh, prize fine. court. Prize court manifest of seized vessels. Okay, good, good. I'll find it. Anybody else out there have a question? Comments? Okay. I'll mute them all, Tom. Uh, they're all on mute, but muted except the ones who muted them. Well, okay, I left two while on mute. Yeah, I did mute them because of background though. So everybody's open now. Does anybody have a question? Yeah. Uh, so how do we move uh, a case to um, Admiralty? You just tell them you want that moved to Admiralty. You give a written document and have it recorded at the clerk of the court's office in that case. So your motion is, I move this into Admiralty. Would that be a different uh, jurist? Well, I mean, would it go to a different court or would they assign it to a different court? I mean, who actually moves it? you know, the logistics of... Well, they're not going to stand by and let you admiralty because basically now you can come after them if they screw up. Hmm. He needs to listen to the calls and understand that he's a prince of America. So when you move it into Admiralty, you give them a lot of incentive to settle the matter. Yeah, and basically uh, the only place that really can hear Admiralty is basically at the federal court level. Right. But yet there are magistrates that are at the state court levels And basically, they work for the state, too. And so, like, your certificate or title or whatever, your tickets. Okay, if you got an appearance bond on there, you turn around and put the claim in to them. That you're yeah, coming you- in and doing a checkmate against that bond. You mentioned uh, doing this at the county level to your magistrate. Yes, into the clerk of the court's office to the magistrate court. Right. You're looking for the administrator, not for a judge. Mm -hmm. Even though they may call themselves a judge, most of magistrates are just administrators. They're not real judges. If they're limited in the cases they can hear. They can hear administrative process. Right. And that's all that you want is an administration of the prize back to you. From the pawn over to the pawn or. I have a question, gentlemen. Go ahead. If you have already started, because I, I just got on to you guys, but I've been, uh, I have started the security party process. I just want to make sure that uh, I wouldn't be convoluting any of the processes by in- installing some of the things that Mr. Devon is talking about this evening. Mr. Who? Well, I don't know what all you're doing in your other process. Well, just the security party process. Um, I 
and I understand what you mean because it, 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 it's a lot of different processes out there. But um, I just want to ensure that I, I wouldn't be convoluting and, and jumbling things up by um, including some of the things that you're doing, which seems to be a lot more simpler and much more clear, concise to understand. You're well, it's probably a little easier to go into uh, the admiralty side of it as you're the pawnee or the pawn or in the pawn that you were the one that basically did the pledge. Your fictional person, your corporate person, was the uh, pawn or over mm-hmm. to and you are the living in admiralty as the living man. You're the prince of America, just like in the movie Merchant of Venice. Yes. You have the hammer, okay, over this maritime court. They're the debtors to us, to our corporate person. Hmm. And that's why with these certificates that we get, basically that uh, uh, certificate of live birth, the certificate of title to your vehicle, they're lottery tickets. Hmm. You have to claim the prize. But we have to go to the right damn place to make the claim. That's the prize court. And I think it's going to end up being that bankruptcy court that it needs to be the prize court. That makes sense. You've talked about how the lawyers in bankruptcy basically strip us off through a salvage process. Thank you, guys. I guess I was just too beat up going to bankruptcy. And I just thought, well, maybe uh, this uh, chief judge for the uh, district court would have a hammer over the bankruptcy. Why well, not even helping in the damn process? He's a real regular shithead. Mm. Claims to be an Article Three judge, but he's an Article Three ju- Judas. Mm. Where else would they hide it? The place nobody wants to go. Bankruptcy. Okay. Oh, that's bad. You're going to bankruptcy here. That's a black mark. But you said the bankruptcy is just another name for prize because somebody's getting the prize. Right. Yeah. I heard those courts like pick people's bones clean, like in the bankruptcy. Just they, they'll take everything they can. Yeah. And you got trustees in there, and you got also uh, the U.S. attorneys in there. They're all bar members. They're all operating in maritime to try and fleece the living shit out of you. You have to take that bankruptcy court into admiralty. Mm. That's what the judge was trying to tell those guys down South Carolina. You can do this yourself. You have to take control of the court. You don't come asking me to do what you're supposed to be doing because I ain't going to do it for you. And he knows you can't jump over that hurdle. He's like, he already knows that you're not smart enough to get over that hurdle. For the most part, yeah. Well, he would probably be shot if he did tell him. Or he would have consequences. 
So basically, the thing is, you need to write this, your items up, take what I had there for going to uh, this uh, office of chief uh, or of magistrate judge, and also the ones going to the chief judge, modify them, turn around, and send them into uh, the bankruptcy court to the bankruptcy judge. <coughs> <laughs> you come in and place that bankruptcy judge in checkmate. He's so just an administrator. Can't... That judge in bankruptcy is not a judge. He's an administrator. They hey, can't uh... be a judge. Yeah, hey, Patrick, uh, that reminds me, once I went to a bankruptcy court and sat in just to see what how it goes, and I noticed that there wasn't anybody on the creditor side. It was always um, the trustee and then the debtor. Right. And so uh, it made me wonder, but they, they put the place uh, or the, the title out on the table as if there was so somebody to be you know, seated there, and it was just like a, it was just two parties to a three-party table. I found that kind of odd. Yeah. So, technically, if, I mean, just thinking out loud here, um, if we come in as admiralty, then we technically could sit in the creditor seat towards... We wouldn't the, even sit in the seat. Okay, you're not going to sit in the plaintiff or the defendant's seat when you come in an admiralty. You're the puppet master. You're now standing over that judge and all the other players in that court. Just like in the movie Merchant of Venice. Where did the Prince of Venice sit? You sat up in the pews up in the top or something, didn't you? He sat up behind. Everything else that was going on out in front of him. But he was the puppet master over that court. Was that called the gallery or something? I don't I, know I what the shit is called, okay? He was just sitting behind her. Yeah. You had the plaintiff and you had your defendant. And then you had basically uh, the one girl there that was playing a. Uh, the guy, Petra or whatever, uh, that was doing, acting as the judge. Okay. So we should watch the merchant to help us with our thinking on this. Yeah, I, I told I, you to watch that a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I did, but we need to do it again. I've got both the Al Pacino version and the BBC version. Yeah, I was wondering why that trustee seemed a little, you know, offset when I went just to sat to listen in on the the hearings and stuff. And seemed a little bit, you know, like nervous in some ways. And I was just asking different questions, just trying to figure out how the thing, you know, the proceedings work and stuff, just visiting. But, you know, it's... It's always interesting to see in person or, you know, you actually have to go sit in on, visit a local courthouse and sit in on these hearings to see how it goes. They have the Merchant of Venice on YouTube and they have the 1973 version and the 2004 version. Yeah, like I said, Pinocchio also. In that movie, basically, you had the puppet master in there. There's been other movies out there about the puppet master pulling the strings. But too many of some of these movies, the people, like in the puppet, they get out there and they want to be the puppet. And that's what they get you to be, is to be the puppet instead of being the puppet master. Right. 
Hey, the movie's here on YouTube. I can send it to uh, Thomas, and he can post it on Skype or something. Are you, you're not able to be on Yahoo anymore? Yeah, I'm on Yahoo. I don't know how to. Uh, should I post? I could post it there, I guess. Yeah, just 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 post the links on Yahoo so everybody can see it. All right. And on the Skype Skype group, if you want. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah, is it just do more than the links? Uh, you know, give a description of which version it is. It's the 2004 is the Al Pacino version, isn't it? Yeah, this one looks like the old. This is uh, it consists of 12 parts to one full movie. At least it's it looks like the older one. That could be the older the, one. Yeah. That that could be the BBC version. Yeah, yeah that like one. Like BBC Music. Listen to this. I'll play just a little bit of it. No, you don't need to. Okay. It says okay. William of Shakespeare. Yeah, well, William Shakespeare wrote it. Yeah, yeah. He wrote a lot of good works there that basically are telling us all about this shit. Yeah. Right. He was probably, uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, Frank he was Bacon. Speaking. He was speaking. He was writing the damn laws on one hand, and then he was turning around and trying to make the people aware of what was going on on the other hand, yeah, he was operating as a pseudo under a pseudo name as William Shakespeare. Right. Shake a spear, like, hey, folks, get get a whiff of this. Get pay attention. Shake a spear, yeah. Yeah, there's an interesting movie about that called Anonymous about who wrote wrote it. There's other theories that saying actually Christopher Marlowe was an ex exile. And uh, he wrote all of this stuff. Well, wouldn't the older movie be, like, probably better than the newer one? No, I no, think the newer one's better. Uh, not to get you an understanding, okay? Yeah. Not if it's BBC. Uh, BBC does some good things, but those are, I don't think, as insightful. Well, I'll look for the newer one before I post it then. Okay. Because there is a newer one. Well, people can find it themselves, basically, if they know how they want to play the damn computer, but basically, you need to get in there and stop playing around with watching all this damn garbage and get out there and start doing some fucking shit. That's right. right. That's right. Okay, I'm getting tired of doing all this shit myself. And then basically, I don't get any response. I need to have people across the country out here doing this shit so that we can compare notes and find out what will work and what won't work. Exactly. That's what this damn site was supposed to be all about. Yeah, well, we, we're doing, we're doing. You want out of the system? Then work to get out of it. I'm just trying to give you some helpful guidelines in the process. Right. I give you the templates. All you have to do in half of them is turn around, place your name in it, and send the fucking thing out that same day. How many people have done that? I don't hear anybody answering. So I know the answer is zero. I sent some out. It takes a while to convert them to the talk format. And then when you don't hear something back, you know that basically we haven't got the right door. So you just got to keep hammering at them <clears throat> and get more belligerent at them. What the hell are they going to do? Come and arrest you? Yeah. No, they ain't. Not if you're the Admiralty. Because if you take them in the court and you're standing there in Admiralty, who's going to charge you? You haven't harmed anybody. Who's going to charge you? The servant can't charge the master. But 
But the master can kick the living shit out of the servant if he wants to. Hey, I haven't done a post here, uh, Thomas. Where where do you... It's This Neo thing doesn't have a thing where to post. It's like, what do you do to post? Actually, what I do to post is to simply write an email to the group. Oh. I'll, if yeah, you want, that's, I'll, I'll, that's what the, the message board's all about. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll put the email address I use in the Skype group. All right. Here, I'll just send you the 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 link and uh, let you post it yourself. Hell, half these damn attorneys don't even know about the monetary ripping off in this country. They don't know that they're out there working for slave wages. But yet they keep jacking their prices up. And then, like on a bond of appearance, the trick in the banking system is that they get you on a check to write a dollar value, D-O-L-L-A-R, handwritten. That's real currency. So they're putting a claim in against your real currency, but they're only paying out one Federal Reserve dollar under the dollar sign. Right. Big fraud. You take a look at their traffic ticket. All their charges are in dollar signs until it comes down to where the appearance bond is, and then they have it written out as dollar. Why? Because they want the real substance. The place to lean against. I don't know what the going off the board rate was today, but Tom earlier when I talked to him, it was roughly about one silver dollar equals 17 and a half Federal Reserve dollars. Right. It was an average. Back in 1969, it was one-to-one. One. Yep. A couple of weeks ago, it was 16.2. So if you're making $17 an hour, you're getting one silver dollar. Well, hell, back in 1969, I was making $2.25 an hour. Probably clean, mowing somebody's yard. I did too. I worked for two dollars an hour mowing lawns. I made plenty of money. Yeah, because that's when it was real value. Right. But now, basically, this fraudulent value is what they're doing is they're siphoning off our labor. They're making us work for slave wages. Right. The automobile still cost, back in 1960s, it was about $2,800 for a brand new vehicle. Well, you multiply that $2,800 times 17 and a half, and it's the same value out here on the market today. Yeah, 35, 40 grand. Yeah, but it's. At the Federal Reserve dollar. So, but the value of the car hasn't changed. It's still, in true value, only $2,800. Right. It's silver. And then you got to pay interest and pay the banker interest on all that money you got to borrow. So you pay twice the amount because you're paying interest. Yeah, because they're depriving you from access of your lawful inheritance in the country. That you were supposed to have when you turned 21 and at the latest 25. 
You're supposed to be a free man. You're not a free man. You only think you're free. <clears throat> Until you stand in admiralty, you're not free. I'm glad we're learning it. I'm glad you're teaching it. Otherwise, you'd have to move out. Okay, of anybody else got a question? Okay, call Tom. Go ahead and okay. close it yes, down. Thank you, Patrick. This will be very helpful. Thank okay. you. 